Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Dr. Yu UT channel. In this video, we will talk about the antiarrhythmics and uh, pharmacology and classification of the antiarrhythmics. Well, this lecture is available in uh, Urdu, so now we'll come as a lecture in English. What is arrhythmia? A means without, arrhythmia means rhythm. Without the rhythm when heart contracts and relax, that is called arrhythmia. What are the causes of arrhythmia or arrhythmicity? The root causes are that abnormal impulses are sent by the heart, by the sinoatrial node to the heart, to the ventricles to contract and relax abnormally. So then it will cause a kind of abnormality that is actually called as arrhythmia. So what are the abnormal impulse causes? Abnormal impulse are actually formed either in a very wrong way or abnormal impulse are either conducted in a very wrong way. Either formed or conducted in a very wrong way. So, formation, coming to the point, sinoatrial node is responsible to form the impulse. When sinoatrial node overshoots time and again, so instead sending one and two sig signals towards the ventricles to contract, it sends four or five signals to contract the ventricles. So like this, what will happen? The ventricles will undergo the contraction four or five times, instead two times. So this will bring the heart in a state now as arrhythmia because the rhythm is lost. And uh, what happens in case of ectopic, ectopic formation? Sometimes instead, uh, normal signal is sent from the sand to the ventricles to the chill of Purkinje fibers. But uh, sometimes in the atria, a signal arises due to some complications, some diseases, some abnormal conditions. Then that impulse re-enters to the atrioventricular node. So now what happened, a normal impulse is also going from the SAN and an abnormal impulse is also going from the ectopic region, from the other region other than the SAN. So now I mean both are going and now again both are supposed to simulate the heart for the contraction. And again, as a result, the heart will contract. Before it was supposed to contract one time, now it is going to supposed to contract twice. So this is actually also causing a kind of arrhythmicity. So both are the causes in case of formation. In case of conduction, what happens? When the signal reaches from the sand to the Purkinje fibers, it is supposed to finish or vanish because its strength is still the Purkinje fibers. Sometimes due to abnormal conditions, the signal re-enters the atria. And from the re atria again, it re-enters, it gets into this same signal re-enters to the atrioventricular node. And so we also give this mechanism a kind of re-entry. This is a kind of re-entry done. This re-entry, as like I told you before, is also again giving the impulse to the ventricles to contract. So this is also causing the arrhythmicity. Let us treat this re-entry in a different way. That is, SAN normally sends the signal through the AV node. This signal is supposed to split into slow and fast path. This is the slow path and this is the fast path. This fast path signal is very fast, so it here, uh, you can say, stops the slow path and uh, leads the way towards the ventricle. And again here, it also gets its way towards the ventricle. So the fast signal then reaches the, each ventricle and the slow one is stopped. And here the slow path actually has a kind of a very quick refractory period, a very short refractory period, S for short. And this fast path has long refractory period, means it says it takes time for again to activate. What happens due to some kind of free entry to the atrioventricular node when there is a kind of free entry to the atrioventricular node? So this short uh, refractory period path is uh, sometimes uh, it is a kind of benefit for that re-entered or the next impulse. So that, that re-entered signal comes and uh, uh, enters through the slow and here it gets its way towards through the long uh, fast path. Now the slow signal is a kind covering the complete AV node and then this is again giving and sending the impulses towards the ventricles. So before a signal was sent by mean of a fast way, fast path. But now just to this re-entry and the next signal is generated and being sent by the slow path. Because of its short refractory period, that uh, slow, that new re-entered signal got a benefit and that rided the, overrided this uh, slow path and got its way towards the ventricles and a kind of new impulses were given to the ventricles. So again, if a ventricle is receiving another week, another impulse, another abnormal impulse, so again it is supposed to contract 
before it was just uh, contracting by one impulse now it is going to be contracted by two impulses you can say one after another or uh, continuous impulses so again when there is a kind of continuity in case of impulses the ventricles will contract abnormally that will actually cause arrhythmicity abnormal heart contraction relaxation well this uh, arrhythmicity is a kind you can you can say uh, treat it in a way by mean of uh, one varium classification drugs according to this, this classification we have four classes and one miscellaneous class also and each class contains a separate drug like a class 1a contains sodium channel blockers 2 beta, beta blockers 3 potassium channel blockers 4 the calcium channel blockers for our ease we will classify these drugs into the ventricular and arterial why because uh, the class 1 and class 3 drugs are acting on the uh, ventricular uh, muscle fibers and uh, whereas the beta blockers and calcium channels are acting in the arterial region specifically on the san sinoatrial node coming to the sodium channel blockers sodium channel blockers actually these blocks the sodium channel now how the sodium channel looks very simple sodium channels have two gates m gate and h gate when it is in the normal state it is like this when it becomes active the, these m gates open and the sodium enters the through the channel and here another gate is waiting for the sodium channel that is called as h gate and this h gate allows the sodium to enter the inside the cell when it becomes inactive the gate m gates are still open but the h gate closes so when the sodium enters inside the cell the h gate allows the sodium to come in and uh, when it is inactive the h gate just closes the path for the sodium so this is actually kind of inactive gate condition active gate condition and normal so the sodium channel blockers due to their action of the drugs we have uh, following drugs these are acting on the sodium channels and but due to their uh, mode of action on the different uh, in a different way on these channels we classify the sodium channels further into class 1a class 1b class 1c because of their action how class 1a is acting on the both active and inactive class 1b is acting or both active and inactive but in a very quick way in a very quick way and class 1c is acting also on the normal sodium channels well coming to the point class 1a quinidine mipramide procainamide their mechanism of action well class 1a 1b 1c all of them are observed uh, to do the action on the sodium as well as on the potassium channels and we know sodium is responsible for to do the depolarization in the zero phase and potassium is responsible to the repolarization in the phase three in all the cases so what quinidine quinidine and mipramide or procainamide they do is that they actually block the active and inactive gates and can they give a push or delay to the depolarization and like this they are also delaying the phase two and phase three why because they are acting on the phase 3 also and phase 3 will be also delayed so this is a kind of action on the of the class 1a and class 1b drugs like phenytoin and lidocaine they are acting in a very quick way so due to which what will happen they will attach very quick and detach very quick so the depolarization will not be observed that much or there will be no any kind of that much uh, enough push to a side but they will just do a little bit uh, delay uh, in the depolarization and they will help us in the phase two well, phase three on the production channels so they actually shorter repolarization phase uh, so now coming towards the class 1c drugs like flea canide and phenone. what is their mechanism of action well class 1c drugs are observed to do the action on the normal also and uh, these normal channels are also being covered by the class 1c drugs so their action is uh, observed uh, very different than 1 and 2 1 and b class 1 a class 1 b and now class 1c drugs are actually giving a very good, uh, enough gave to the depolarization so they prolong the depolarization phase and they have no action on the phase 3 or you can say on the repolarization phase so class 1 a drugs they prolong the repolarization as well as the depolarization phase class 1 b drugs they prolong a little bit the depolarization phase and shorten the repolarization phase and class 1 c drugs they prolong the depolarization phase or zero phase and they do have no action on the third phase 
or you can set the repolarized surface. That's the mechanism of action of the sodium channel blockers. And uh, what about the potassium channel blockers? We have the drugs like sotalol and amiodarone. What is their mechanism of action? Well, they block the sodium channel. When you block the sodium channel, what will happen? There will be delay observed in the repolarized surface. Very simple. And we have some air shoulder, according to us, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. And uh, the beta blockers, just like ismolol and metoprolol, they will block the sympathetic supply on the SAN, SAN natural node. When there is no any further impulse to the SAN, so what will happen? A kind of impulse reduction is seen, which is helping us to reduce the number of impulses. Good. Uh, the drug samples are the asmolol and metoprolol, etc. Calcium channel blockers. We have studied that in our last videos. Well, we know that verapamil and diltiazem, they are very specific for to do the actions on the heart. And uh, more specifically, if you talk about the SAN, they are the non dihydropyridines like verapamil is very specific so much along with the diltiazem. And they actually prolong the phase 4. So when phase 4 is prolonged, what will happen? Then very then a kind of delay will be observed for the next uh, generation for the sand so you know sand generates the action potential very quickly uh, due to the phase four or funny channels or cation channels here so you know the action potential generation is uh, brought by the phase four so here we we know that we remember from our last lectures the cation channels are responsible to do the or to cause the depolarization so when we block these channels the calcium channels present here on the phase four so they will actually help us to delay the impulse generation this pharmacology is actually helping us to delay the action potential or uh, to delay the impulse generation when there is delay observed in the impulse generation in case of arrhythmia in a minute the, con the ventricles will be receiving for about five signals but when we ob observe these drugs or when we take these drugs or when we go through this pharmacology then those five signals will reduce to one or two reason is that because these all these pharmacological drugs they are helping us to a kind of delay the impulse generation so which will help in the reduction of the impulse uh, numbers to be sent from the sand to the ventricles or they will actually some drugs are helping us into ventricular contraction then the ventricles will contract in a very simple how in a very slow way or then the ventricular contraction is a kind you can say reduced to some numbers so that's a little bit from my side about the anti arrhythmics mix hope so you got and if still you have any kind of question remaining you can uh, drop that in the comment box we'll come to answers inshallah